All right, guys, welcome back to Movies with Bob. We're going to be watching An Idiot Abroad, Episode 2 today. Kyle Pilkington is going to India. Um, episode 1 was awesome. He went to China. He saw people eating ridiculous food and bitched about the Great Wall. It was hilarious. So I'm excited to watch this episode. Let's get into it right now. And uh, please subscribe if you haven't. The Seven Wonders of the World, Christ the Redeemer, the Taj Mahal, the Great Pyramids, truly man's greatest achievements. But there's one man who sees them differently. Like a pylon. <laughs> Carl Pilkington. <laughs> I don't know the politically correct term, moron. I think he is around empty-headed, chimp-like, mank, moron, buffoon, idiot. Is that normal? And he's a friend. Oh, he's a typical little Englander, and he doesn't like going out of his comfort zone. Bollocks are squashed. I just think that it'd be amazing to send him round the world. What we'd like to see is him experience other cultures, other peoples, and see if in any way we can change his outlook on the world. <laughs> I've been to many exotic places. I genuinely think travel uh, broadens the mind. I want him to hate it. I want him to hate every minute of it for my own amusement. Nothing is funnier than Carl in a corner being poked by a stick. I, can't I am wait that to stick. See that. And now I have the mic of Sky behind me. <laughs> Shit! Shit! This is one of the funniest, most expensive practical jokes I've ever done. And it's going to be great. Just let me go! Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> Uh, this you must be excited about seeing, surely. This truly, without question, is one of the seven wonders of the world. The extraordinary Taj Mahal. Yeah? Yeah. Built in the 17th century, it took them 22 years to construct it. Well, that's not good, is it? If that will happen now, you go, what are they doing? It's the 17th century! A man who builds a mausoleum for his dead wife. So heartbroken, is he? Guilty. He obviously did something bad when she was alive. <laughs> that's like, you know, giving someone flowers, isn't it? I've never had to do that. I've never felt guilty. You'd never thought, I'll just give Suzanne some No, because she'd be going, oh, I, what's been going on? If I built her that, she'd be going, what's been going on? <laughs> Fair enough. Why, yeah. why did he feel he had to do that? Because he loved her so much. <laughs> it was a shrine to her memory. Yeah. Just a little elephant going down the street there. I can't imagine him being that good as a way of getting about. To me, that's like how people moan in London about people having four befores. You don't need an animal of that size to get about. It's way too big. Getting ill is my biggest worry about being here. I hate being ill. You know, Suzanne isn't around. I'm on my own. If I get ill, I'll just have to mope about on my own. I mean, it's definitely the poorest place I've ever been to, you know, without a doubt. And I, I don't know if I'll be able to get used to that. Fucking runaway horse! It's doing me head in this. I mean, I'm meant to be uh, meeting a, a local fella who rides one of these rickshaw things for a living. Um, Rick and Steve thought it'd be a good idea for some reason. I, I, I can't work out what that reason is, though. This is madness. It's like standing in the middle of a motorway. I mean, what a place to meet a fellow who's got a rickshaw. The eyes have never been so busy. There's always something there going, look at me. And then you go, look at that. And as you turn that way, you see something over there. So you like that. By the end of today, my neck will be well and truly worn out because it doesn't normally move that fast. There's layers of madness. And what is that? Where's he taking that? You can't say he's taking it to the tip. There's a shit everywhere. It just overload the bike so much. That you just kind of think, get a van. <laughs> Is there any distinguishing features in this fella's rickshaw? Hello, come here, come here. Yeah, I, I know you. I know you better. Come here, I'm Mr. Uh, Ashik. Ashik. Yeah, yeah. I'm a rickshaw driver. Do you? Mr. Ricky has sent me. Okay. It's a bit of a mad place to sit and have a discussion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oncoming traffic. Oh. Oh, what the... What the hell is 
going on? Just pure chaos. In the arse here. Oh, there's no way of getting around. Oh, I'm going through someone's cricket game. Oh, I'm, I'm I've never been here. I haven't even been here a full day yet. I thought the day was going to end and, I, you know, at least have a good night's kip. That's not going to happen now. Ashik's just invited me to stay with him. He lives in the back of his shop. <laughs> You've got a shop. You live in it oh as well. Oh, my God. Yeah. I handle two jobs. The rickshaw. One, yeah. And make kebabs. This is my shop. Wow. If you ever feel, you know, down on your luck, look at these people. and They're making it work. Kudos to them. I would be absolutely miserable if I had to live in a situation like this. Yeah, and make kebabs. This is my shop. Make my coffee. Hiya. Bunzar. Talk to me. These are my friends. Uh, would you like to here to stay or here? On the um, I'll, I'll just sit down there if that's all right. As you like. So how would you sleep here? Yeah. What, just flat out there? Yeah. That's... <laughs> Tonight, how many will be sleeping here? Two, three, four. Can you understand why this is a little bit of a shock to me? This is a real life of, uh, a person who is poor. Yeah. When, when I found out that he ran a, a shop from where he lived, I kind of thought it'd be, you know, how you see chippies and they sort of got a living room in the back. And when you walk in, the bell goes and they run out from watching Emmerdale Farm or whatever and they say, what do you want? I'll have cod and chips. That's what I was expecting. Not sort of... Uh, I mean, what is this? It isn't a living space, is it? What's it lacking? What's it lacking? I mean, there isn't even a toilet, actually. That's just only just hit me. I was worrying about having to use a traditional toilet. There isn't one, so that's that worry gone. But then, what what do we do? We are Indians, and we respect our guest. I already take a room from my friend for you. Special. Okay? So we're not staying here tonight? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> What makes you think I will be happier in this other place? Have they got a toilet? Yeah. Let's go then. Yeah. Let's go. Good. You've sold it to me. I think that's one of the only times I've ever seen Carl smile, even in the cartoon. <laughs> and I've seen about 85 bugs crawl on this guy's wall in the, just the two minutes of this video. Let's go then. Yeah. Let's go. Good. You've sold it to me. Seems like a really nice dude, too. That's crazy. This is more like it. This will do. Here you go. This is toilet. Toilet, brilliant. Well, how do you go? I don't understand the... Go, go, go. Turn, turn. Hold on a minute, I'm just getting my balance. Checks. Yeah. Now sit. No paper. I, I don't think I'll be able to go like this. Why not? My body's just not used to this. All Indians also use these toilets. I know, but do you understand how difficult it is for me? I've come from London. Yeah. Less than 24 hours ago, I was sat in one, <laughs> newspaper, quite happy. Not, not even 24 hours ago. And now you're saying, come in here, give it that, you'll be all right. It's not as easy as that for me. My insides <laughs> won't, won't allow it to happen. It is better. It can't possibly be better. Why not? Splashback. I didn't want to get into detail. No, no, no. Seriously, this is better. Well, you'll see tomorrow, because I'll tell you what, I'm getting first dibs on this. Okay. And you'll see tomorrow if it's better. When you come in here and you'll go, good God, who's been in here? <laughs> Let's see how good it is. <laughs> You're laughing, because you know I'm right. Right. Hopefully I won't need to go. Well, I didn't sleep well last night, did I? I'm still shattered from yesterday. I mean, that was a mental first day. It doesn't look like it's going to end either. I mean, Ashex just gave me some pyjamas to wear. He said, oh, you'll be needing these for, for your next surprise. I don't know what it is. You know, I mean, surprises are meant to be nice things, aren't they? What's that, Carl? It's got a text from Steve. Hi, Carl. India's not all poverty and urban chaos, mate. 
Well, obviously it hasn't been here because it is. So that straight away, that's annoyed me. Time to get your ass up north for some exposure to the spiritual side of India. The biggest religious festival on the planet. Only 20 million pilgrims expected. He knows I hate crowds. Um, just one hurdle to get there. It's an eight hour overnight bus ride. Excuse me, what's, what's all this? Olie! Why are they covered in? Olie! Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Olie! I want to go to the bus station now. Bus station. You know, the big bus. Big. <laughs> What's going on? Just everybody just looks like they're painter and decorators. Everyone is just caked in colours. Happy Oli! I just hope we don't stop at any more traffic lights because every time we stop, someone slaps my face with a load of colour. Uh, the bus is coming up. Buses. How is it the middle of the road? Is this the bus station? Bus station. Try to get a bus. You come with me. Buses down here, yeah? This is colour, this colour, this colour. This green, this yellow, this black. Today is festival day. Come, come with me. Come, my family is there. Your family? No, this is my family. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. What are we doing here? Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. I mean, normally, if I'm messing about with paint, I'm quite a tidy worker. This wouldn't happen. But I didn't have time to not do it, did I? He said, come and meet my family. I'm like, all right, the next thing you know, it's like... I mean, it is paintball, basically, without the safety. There was no goggles involved. It was just... It's good that, you know, Ashek is concerned about my clothing and he gave me something to wear today. He could have told me about the shoes, you know. I mean, it's all very well telling me, like, to worry about a T-shirt that I think was, like, 12 quid from Top Man. I've got 70 quid trainers on. He didn't tell me to take them off. So, um, they're knackered. <laughs> Yesterday, I thought I'd got used to it. I thought, right, I'll be OK tomorrow. Just, just when you think, right, I know what India means, and I know what it, what it's all about. This happens. Anyway, where's this bus stop? Well, he seems to be having a good time so far. I'm not well, honestly. I feel really sick. I feel Never mind. Bad. I can't tell if I'm sort of. Got a bit of a bad fever because you know I can't tell what colour I am with all the uh, with all the dye. But um, uh, I don't care anymore. I just sort of feel like if I'm going to shit myself, I will because <laughs> I just feel that sort of ill. The thing you do. That's never been used. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it? Is that the... That is a queue here. I'm just... He's, he's helping me out. Yeah? Uh -huh. Is that all right? Sorry. Just a quick one. Just a ticket to Arab Bar? Kicking off. I knew, I knew that would happen. Yeah, yeah I know. I know. I, I'm, I'm happy. I mean, at the end of the day, are these all for the same bus? You know, I don't want to be sat on a bus for eight hours with some people who, you know, pissed off with me. Hello? Excuse yeah. me. Thanks. Excuse me. I'll tell you what, it doesn't matter how amazing that Taj Mahal is, it's not worth all this. I haven't even seen it yet. So I'm telling you that now. And that isn't good. Going with that attitude. Alan Wicker, he did all these travel shows years ago. Smart fellow with a suit on. Never saw him covered in shit. Never saw him knackered, whinging, moaning. People will be watching it going, oh, what's wrong with you? It's India, what do you expect? Yeah, yeah well, you're not here, are you? Received 4.58 p.m. All right, mate. How are we going? Just catching up. Just having a cup of tea. Just got back. 
New York. Drove a night. First class, yeah, I didn't get better than that. <laughs> slept all the way after a few uh, glasses of champagne. It's flat bed to amazing, aren't they? Um, yeah. Speak to you later, boy. Let me know how it's going. What an asshole. <laughs> I don't know anything about the festival. Just, you know, other than what Steve told me about it being a, a massive religious thing and it's, it's by a famous river, you know, the Ganges, which I've heard of. But other than that, I, I, I don't know why I'm going. And on top of all that, you know, Ricky's told me that I'm staying at a place called Lahore House. Sounds good, doesn't it? Your tent is ready. Tent? Yes. Tent, brilliant. I haven't slept. I've been put in a tent. You see? She's all right. Yes. Bathroom. Beautiful. This is well smart. And a toilet. An actual this. toilet. <laughs> Brilliant. Bit of a stretch there for the toilet paper, if I'm being picky. <laughs> that, that distance. But I'll tell you what, I am uh, really chuffed. Yeah, I've, I mean, I've been camping. I've done tents before, but nothing like this. I've got a normal toilet, which is handy because the way I've been feeling. Nice comfy bed. View of that, you know, famous river. Can't ask for more. A lot of people say I'm going to India to find myself. Good colour of that. But what happens if I change and then I go home and I'm all different? Suzanne's going, What's happened to you? And then she doesn't like the, the new me that I've found. <laughs> and then I'll start to hate myself because I'm not the person who I thought I was. I know who I am. Bloody hell, I'm getting bills for Carl Pilkington left, right, and centre, so I hope I'm in. Because if I'm not, I'm paying for someone else. Not long with this, is there? All this space here. Eh? Honestly, I'm happy. I can stay here now for the rest of the time here. Eh? If I'm listening to him doing that, isn't that me getting involved in that enough? <laughs> just saying, let's just have a few days here. Eh? That's the Ganges, I'll look at that. Isn't that a big part of India? Let's focus on that for a bit. It's not very interesting telly to just stay here all day, though, Carl. I don't know why Steve wants me to go to this religious festival, because he knows I'm not into it. The only things that's making me sort of interested a little bit is a bloke who's had his arm in the air for 12 years and the elephant baba. Other than that, I don't know what's down there for me. <laughs> All right, mate. How are you getting on, man? Uh, well, I've, I've had better holidays. Um, <laughs> it's not a holiday. I have to keep reminding you, it's not a holiday, my friend. You are making a travel programme for the television. Now, the Kumela Festival is the largest spiritual festival in the world. All this spiritual stuff you keep harping on about. It's not me. Why do you think I'm interested in... Oh, you don't have to find spirituality. You're God. You don't have to become Hindu. Just go. And but that's like going to a brothel and saying, don't mind me, I'm just going to stand over here and watch. Either you get involved or you shouldn't be there. I thought you'd start to see how things are different around the world. Your eyes are open. Yeah. It's a beautiful, weird, extraordinary place. Yeah. And, and tonight I had some sort of new pudding that I've never had before. Carrots with sort of milk and sugar on it. I enjoyed it. I'd have it again. I don't know if I'll find it in London. I don't want to watch you eat carrots <laughs> on the telly! In HD. <laughs> Even in HD. This is a bit weird, isn't it? Are these, are these the Baba people? I mean, they're meant to have special powers, aren't they? But look at them. I mean, I thought they'd be sort of more religious looking. Do you know what I mean? All prim and proper. But some of them haven't even got pants on. We are now in an area which is all different Babas. Ah, welcome. You should take his blessing. First Baba. It reminded me of Bill Oddie. His feet are backwards. Only yoga. Yoga. Big power. Yeah. Big power. Yeah. And even though he's meant to be this mystical sort of man, different life and everything, I was just looking at him thinking, I haven't seen the goodies for ages. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other Baba looked like Jim Morrison. There he was, start bollock naked, shades on. He was concerned about hurting his eyes in the sun, but wasn't worried about, you know, sunburning his arse cheeks. 
<laughs> he's showing you some yog postures. So he'll he's showing a lot. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to see more, you'll have to pay. I don't want to see more. Yeah. Didn't know where to look. Sorry, that's a telling that's enough. Sticking Jesus. his legs around the back of his head and everything. I got a right eyeful. Okay. Good lord. Oh. Can I try? Yeah. I just wondered how, how bendy my legs are. Yeah. That's all I'm taking off. <sighs> oh, just heard something crack. Yeah. <laughs> right, you ready? <laughs> Hang on. Ah. <sighs> <sighs> Oh, I can't. Oh, my goodness. Dollar. 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 He has chosen this and as a part of his way of uh, communicating and his way of reaching to the God. That, that to me, is, is it's, it's ridiculous. It's sort of, most of the time, my left hand is only helping out the right hand. It's if I'm washing up, I pass it something. That's it, or it just holds something whilst this one does all the work. I understand that one arm is better than the other, but I'd never say, oh, but I don't need it. Has, has, has anybody ever took it further and done both, both arms? There are others also who do it with one leg up, both hands up, both the legs up, so they never stand on their feet. So that's, that's no existence, is it? We all dedicate our lives to something, don't we? Been with Suzanne for 16 years. That's dedication for you. And I've got my two arms to do things for her. Is he married? How does he help around the house? Albert, windows need cleaning. Mm, you'll have to do them. You know. I mean, it's just a great excuse, isn't it? <laughs> Something tells me that guy doesn't have a house. Yeah, it was, it was better than I thought it was. You know, quite interesting. And I'm going back tomorrow, aren't I, to see uh, the elephant baba. He's got a head like elephant. Should be good. <laughs> Maybe he does. I'm going to go down to um, the Cumbermore Festival again, which is weird, isn't it? Because I, I didn't want to go initially, but I um, found it quite interesting. And the translator's called, and he's told me that he's found the elephant baba. Oh, yeah, I can see him, yeah, I can see him. You can? Yeah, yeah, if we take off. Shoes off. Money down there. Oh. How is he feeling today? Is he well? OK, good. OK. Wow. He doesn't, he doesn't mind me looking uh, at all. This is fine. Yeah. And he, does it have any sort of health issues with him? Does he struggle doing anything? Your health is all big. Everything is big. Everything is big. Everything is big. He's quite healthy. He does his yoga every day. Could you um, get him to explain what effect it has had on living here and looking like this? It's a lot of time for me. The main god for them is Ganesh, the elephant god. And so they consider to be kind of an incarnation of Lord Ganesh. It was our thought it would be, you know, meeting Elephant Baba. He seems quite happy. You know, he's, he's doing what he can do with the way he's been born. It was his mate that surprised me more. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Whips his uh, walking stick out. Jeez. Jesus! Oh man! Oh god! I don't, I don't understand what, what, what does that show? He can do it just because he does yoga every day. I've never heard of that sort of yoga. <laughs> oh, what was that? There was a crack. When you're doing that every day, that's that's something you need, isn't it? The walking stick. It's it's handy that it's a, a two-in-one tool in a way. Well, I don't understand this need. Here to let everyone know what you believe in, vandalising his own sort of knob and bollocks. Yeah, that was, that was an added bonus. I didn't know I was going to be getting that today. Oh, got a text message this morning from Steve. 
He said, all right, Carl, I was worried that you would not be able to understand spirituality. So I've asked a local saint to take you to his ashram for the night for some one-to-one -one discussions on the nature of life and higher levels of consciousness. And apparently I'm going to meet one of his disciples, a fella called Davram. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Are you Davram? America. <laughs> Davram? America. What? Are you Davram? Yes, I Are am. You? What do you mean, American? Oh, I thought you said, where did I come from? Yes, yeah, so my name is Dave Rom. Dave Rom. Okay, yes. brilliant. You're going to meet I just want to watch that exchange again. Sorry. What? Are you Dave Rom? Yes, I Are am. You? What do you mean, American? His disciples, a fella called Dave Rom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Are you Dave Rom? America. Dave Rom? America. Are you Davram? Yes, I am. Yeah. What do you mean, American? Oh, I Are thought you, you said, where did I come from? Yes, yeah, so my uh -huh. name is Davram. Davram, okay, yeah. brilliant. <laughs> You're going to meet, really, one of the great saints of India. Swamiji has reached the height of spiritual development. Just being in the presence of a master of that caliber elevates one's awareness. And will he keep asking me if I'm feeling that? No. 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 Yeah. I'm trying to think of times in my life where I felt a bit different. Right. And I remember it was years ago, I nearly choked to death mm. on an ice pop. Mm. I mean, mum had to give me, do you know the thing where you squeeze around the waist and sort of cough it up? Right. And I got my breath back. Uh -huh. And after that, I felt quite uh, alive. Okay, well, take that experience, magnify it many fold, and let it be uninterrupted. Hey, how are you, Swamiji? Absolutely fine, absolutely fine. That's good. You are keeping good health? I've been better. You, as an individual, you must be analyzing yourself whether you are body oriented or mind oriented or soul oriented? I'd say mind. Uh, once you know how to analyze and systematize and synchronize systematically, then ultimately you could be the source of inspiration for millions. Mm. Anyway, right. next thing I know, Swamiji says, I want to take you across the Ganges in a boat because he wanted to cleanse my soul or something. <laughs> Never had it cleansed before. Yeah, look, look, it's gone down, look, it's having a dump. Yeah, he's having a dip. Yeah. So you will have to dip yeah, out, yeah. I will take you oh, there. Yeah. You will have to dip there. I'm not dipping now. <laughs> no, no, I'm... No chance. <laughs> not a chance. I better sit, then I sit, sit. You all right, Swami? Oh, shit, now. Hang on. Hello? What's going on? I'm, What's I'm, going on? I'm just in the Ganges at the moment, just on a rubber dinghy with a 77 year old man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! So it's, oh, it's not a great. That's so funny! I'm sat on the front here with a rubber dinghy. Cool. Can I call you back in a bit? No, uh, well, I'm just going out now. I'll see you later. Yeah, bye. Bye. It's time to call, isn't it? Would you like to have the bath in the Ganges? You know, isn't it, isn't it wrong, though? For me to get in there, it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything to me, does it? It doesn't count, surely. He said, do you want to go in the Ganges? I said, no. It is the best medicine on the earth. Yeah? Yeah. It ah. can heal you and it can help you and can inspire you. And he left out that, which I thought was quite good. He didn't force it on me to go any further. And then um, he started stripping off. So I had to. It is madness. <laughs> it is a kind of divine madness. Come on. Come on. Hey. <laughs> so right. sweet of you. Have a dip, have a dip. And I said, so, well, if you go in, I'll go in. And he did. So I had to. Oh! Good hell. Oh, that was it, and then suddenly it's like, oh, let's dunk your head. Yeah, one stone. Yeah, bye. You know, not once either. You know, 
do it three times, eh? Three dunks. And you don't do that with a ginger nut and a cup of tea. That's a, that's a two dunk. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. So, do that. He's happy. And he was saying, oh, look what it's done to you. You look full of life. And it did wake me up a bit, but it is like minus five. <laughs> After having the bath in the Ganges, so you have the new dress, Indian dress. Back for a cup of tea? A cup of tea and biscuit. Have you got some biscuits? Yes. Yeah. I love a biscuit. Yeah. I feel like I can take a biscuit off you now. I did that for you, though. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? It's funny how things change. I said I wouldn't get in there. <laughs> I don't feel like I'm round some sort of special power, but he seems like a nice bloke, and that's all you want, really. Nice bloke, makes you feel welcome in his gaff. He's fed us, he's let me have a bed, messed about in his rubber dinghy. You know, if that's what spirituality is about, then that's just being mates, really. That's basic, isn't it? It's about getting on with people. He's a transformed man. Look at this guy. Very airy. <laughs> <laughs> Sugar See you in the morning. Okay. <laughs> 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 Very jolly man. Please love yourself. All right, Carl. Now, I know you've got a long drive today to the Taj Mahal, so Ricky and I thought you might like a little stop-off. Um, the cow is obviously a very important and profound creature in India, so we've arranged for you to call in at a lovely little cow sanctuary. All right, now I know you think that sometimes Ricky and I do stuff just to annoy you, but this place is run by Harry Krishnas, all right, and when have they ever annoyed anyone? I don't know why Steve sent me to look at a cow. We've got them at home. Anyway, as soon as I got in there, they had me on cow worship duty. I'm giving it a sense of passing. Here, we are going to be making some cakes. Cow dung cake. Cakes. Is that fresh? Yeah, this is fresh. Anyway, these cow dung Ugh. cakes, you know, it's a type of fuel. You know, it shouldn't really have the word cake in it. Oh, that's very good. Oh, it is as well, isn't it? I thought it might have just been mud, but it is proper cow shit. I mean, I was worried about the local thing about, you know, using your hand when you've been to the toilet. I'm getting neck eyeing cow shit. My God. I never thought I'd be doing that. Been ill twice already, so this isn't going to help the situation, is it? I thought I was on the way to the Taj Mahal today. They said, oh, let's stop over here. <laughs> no problem. I see some cows. What can go wrong? And then, like, just as I'm leaving, you know, I'm thinking I'm getting out of there, they drag me into some sort of souvenir shop. Soap? Yeah. Here, we use cow dung juice. Cow dung juice. juice. Yeah. No one I know has ever been rushing around going into body shops saying, you haven't got any uh, cow shit, have you? Cow shit soap. <laughs> it's not needed. So not necessary in life. This is uh, tooth powder. Right, toothpaste, but Light powder. Enough, yeah. And what, what, what's this made from? Cow urine, cow dung, black pepper. You can still light the cow without going that far with the, with the shit and the paste. This he can drink. Over my arm, then. Oh, God. <laughs> It was just like old man piss, sort of, when your granddad's bin hasn't flushed. And you drink that? Yeah. This is for oh. all kind of hair problems. It yeah. cures baldness? Yeah. Come all the way to India, sticking cow shit on my head. Look. If I said get stuff out of a chicken and rub it over your head, they'd go, don't be stupid. But because it's a cow and it's this sort of religious animal, it's just, yeah, drink it, straight direct, get the tail out. <laughs> it's just too much. I think it's... It annoyed me a bit. I've still got bits under my nails. Oh, it's starting to do me head in again. Just, you know, even like that travelling today. Normally I like travelling around, sat in a car, looking out of a window, looking at life going on, but it's not, it's not a nice thing to do in India. Honestly, I just want to go home. Oh, Jesus. It stinks. The eyes are burning. All right, Carl, it's Steve, mate. Um, Ricky and I thought, you know, as it's approaching the end of Hi. your time in India, we thought we would treat you. So we've booked you into the honeymoon suite 
of a hotel with a view of the Taj Mahal to give you a little bit of a morale boost. So, uh, enjoy it, mate. See you soon. Bye. This is the hotel? Yeah, this is the hotel. This one? Yeah, this. This is the main gate. This hotel's got a honeymoon suite. Jesus. Hilkington? Honeymoon suite. Good, isn't it? That's good. Honeymoon suite? This isn't a honeymoon suite. You'd have a honeymoon here. What's that? Oh, what's the cupboard for? All right. Sort of an ensuite shed, which is uh, quite handy. Oh, God, it stinks. <clears throat> Look me. What a shithole. Sandpaper. Is this one a dartboard? Hmm. Thought that was going to be the fridge. To the room. Terps, paintbrushes, good. I mean, that's what you want on your honeymoon, isn't it, really? <laughs> Every time you have a smell of Ron Seal, oh, that, that takes me back to our special night. I can't see the Taj. He, he said you look straight out there. That's what you can see, that. It's madness, not a dead body staying in something half decent like that. I mean, eh. I ate it, honestly. I, f I really ate it here. Eh? Fuck this, I'm not staying here. Eh? Can't be arsed with this. Carl, where are you going? Carl! Carl. <coughs> Carl, where are you going, mate? Fucking, I just. I'm not staying in that room. What's it about? Well, I don't think anyone near this quite as bad. I mean, it's not your room's not that bad compared to ours. It stinks as shit. What do you mean it's not that bad? It fucking stinks. It's just that I've been here for like ages. I'm knackered. I haven't slept. It's another noisy road. I've been ill. Do you know what I mean? It's not your fault. It's not your fault. You just went back anyways. I bet many a bloke spent a night in here on their own. Even though it's a honeymoon suite. I bet the woman says, that's it, it's over. This way you bring me for my wedding night, forget it. Six in the morning. Been awake all night, throwing up. Just been coming out the other end. I'm not feeling my best, to be honest. So it's your first proper glimpse of the Taj Mahal, Carl. How does it feel? It's all right, isn't it? It's not bad. It took 20 years to build. He built it for his dead wife. I just think it was a case of keeping himself busy. They say that, don't they? When someone dies, it's a loss in your life, so give yourself a little project to do. It's quite a big project, though, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, did he treat her well when, when she was knocking around? Well, she was one of four wives. Know what I mean? One of four wives. No, I had three other wives. I shouldn't have done that, really. Best stick her in something nice. Now oh, she's dead. It's too late. It's too late, mate. I'll come crawling back once she's dead. <laughs> I love his observations. The way his brain works. <laughs> Ramesh. Hi, I'm Carl. Nice to meet you, sir. Welcome to the Taj Mahal. Thank you very much. When you look the Taj Mahal from the next arch, like a Taj Mahal in a frame, 
beautiful like at the postcard view. Yeah, it works well, doesn't it? Nicely, nicely fits in, doesn't it? Yes. Your dream come true. You're in front of this beautiful building, majestic. Is this part of your tour? Yeah. <laughs> there you can see a beautiful reflection view of Taj Mahal. Like a buy one, get one free. Buy one, get one free. Good offer. Next step. Yes. So, you can see the Princess Diana chair. When it was in 1992, she came here, she took the pose from here. Daft how the tourists all love the Princess Diana chair, queuing up to sit down on the chair that Princess Diana sat on. Load of nonsense. We're after these two, all right? I'll, yes, sir, uh, that's your turn. All right. Just a sausage factory, sit down, look miserable. Next. Yes, hands on the knees. That's his style. Very nice. Is that good? You have a photogenic face. Taj Mahal is beautiful, you are more <laughs> handsome. You got any feelings coming up? Uh, stomach's better now. It's fine. I meant more of an emotional nature being here. <laughs> um, how can you have an emotional feeling here? There's like 40 people stood around. Princess Diana had it closed off, didn't she? She could sit here and think about stuff. But compared to out there, this is peaceful. And I think that's why Diana came here. That's why she looked fed up. She probably had the shits for two days, sick of the racket, crap hotel. She's like, God, when am I going home? Nothing to do with a marriage breakup. It's India. The main white structure, four sides symmetrical. Look from all sides, same view. All right. So by the center line, Taj Mahal divide like a mirror image. Half this side, half other side. It is, isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> yes, sir. I find it odd, to be honest. He's built for a dead person, yet he was doing all that symmetrical stuff. He's like, hang on a minute. It's almost like having a gravestone with a Sudoku on it. What is it? Is it a place to sort of remember someone, have a special moment, or is it a place to go and have a puzzle? It's like that thing, have you ever done that thing where you have a mirror, yeah. and you go like that in the mirror? Yeah. And it looks like, looks like both sides are going straight. like, it's the same, same idea, same isn't it? Way. This is the best way to see it for me, this. It's not the best river I've ever been down. I think I've just seen a fish with three heads. But I just like the peacefulness. Alright, boy. Alright. What's going on? Yeah, I've just been to see the Taj. Oh, yeah? Any good? Yeah, it's alright, you know. I was pretty impressed. What's your impression of India in general? I ate it. I stayed at a place that had an ensuite shed. Did he stay there? And this is like the final view of it, isn't it, before I go home? Do have a quick word for Carl? Hello? All right, mate, how's it going? Yeah, so it's fine here, mate. How's it going there, more importantly? It's been interesting, Steve. I've learned a lot. I've seen a lot. I've done a lot. I've shat a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just over there, we cremate bodies over there, so you, you're never that far oh, away from a bit of weirdness in India. Even here, probably on the telly, you're going, that looks lovely. Wildlife going on there. The sun going down. The Taj Mahal. Hang on, what's that? There's a load of dead bodies at the back. Hang on, Ricky wants another word. Clean this bed. You're going to go and see a nice building. But before that, you're going to possibly shit yourself to death for 10 days. I don't reckon you'd have gone. Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> it's been the only building in India that has a bit of normality to it. So maybe that's why it's a wonder. Yeah, I can't see anything matching this one, to be honest. Pretty serious for me, that, isn't it? All right, that was an idiot, uh, an idiot abroad episode two, India. Um, that was great. Um, he actually enjoyed the wonder once he got away from all the chaos. I happen to agree with Carl on like a lot of his points. Just the, the, I wouldn't be able to deal with the beeping. I would have had a way worse meltdown than he did with the beeping in that 
a honeymoon suite of, of a hotel room, I wouldn't have been able to sleep at all. I don't know if he was able to sleep himself, but yeah, this is uh, great. I can't wait to watch this entire series, but please subscribe if you haven't. We got uh, the Ricky Gervais show, the animated of the, of the Sirius XM um, show, uh, doing reactions to that and movie reactions coming up. So please subscribe and uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next one.